Pretty cake, okay, people. <laughs> That's the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life. Okay. Hi. I don't know how to start a video. Um, but hi, I'm Alex. I am a non-binary uh, artist. I just graduated from college with a studio art degree in May. And for the next year, I have an uh, artist residency. I am a multimedia artist, um, which basically for me means that I work with like pretty much any and every medium, and I mix and match them. And I can go into I can go more into that in different videos. And this is my cat mittens. Okay, so some people just wanted me to rough. I can't talk today. Some people met what, <laughs> ma'am. Please. Some people wanted me to make a YouTube video that goes a little bit more in depth about what I was talking about on my recent TikTok video about collecting clay and clarifying clay and kind of talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so basically um, I said a lot that I wanted to say in my TikTok video, so you know what? I'm going to insert that right here. This weekend I went to a river and look at that! That's clay! So I found a bunch of clay and I collected a lot of it. It turned out to be about 35 pounds because I just love clay. So here I am putting it into a bag I found in my trunk. Thank you, trunk. And it's really heavy. All right, so I brought it home and I filled the thing with water and then I turned it all into slip, which is basically just like squishing the clay so that it is all like a giant clay water. And I stirred it and stirred it and stirred it and then I sifted it um, so that there's no rocks or like plants inside of it. And then every once in a while I would skim the water off the top and then I got a little impatient so we are uh, sort of straining it with uh, two layers of sheets and scraping it every once in a while so that the water drips to the bottom. That's the setup. Here's my first chunk of clay and look what I made with it. Yay! So some of the questions that are very common that I was asked um, regarding this video were first and foremost how do you know it's clay? Um, how do you know it's clay rather than mud? Um, first and foremost, you'll know it's clay when you touch it. Um, and if you don't know what clay feels like, I don't know how to describe that to you. Um, well, but basically clay is very dense. <clears throat> so if you're like going to grab some clay, it um, there's a kind of a lot of um, resistance to just picking it up and grabbing it. Whereas if it's mud or sand or something you're just gonna pick it right up right and then it's gonna like trickle through your fingers that's not clay clay i actually have a bag of right here so clay is very heavy because it's really dense so this is a quart ziploc bag and it's i don't know i was trying to say like i bet it's five pounds but uh, i'm very weak so but this is definitely at least this is definitely at least two pounds two or three pounds of clay and it's in a quart size bag um so it's really heavy and dense and like you know it takes a little bit of force to kind of move it around that's very different than mud or silt or you know anything else like that so how do you know it's clay if you pick up a little bit of clay and it's maybe dry or it's really really wet on the other hand um so if it's really dry you dip it in some water and then knead it a little bit which is where you you know kind of like fold it in on itself you know knead it like bread um, if you knead it and it becomes pliable, like this, see, and it keeps its shape and it's like, you know, feels like clay, there you go, clay. Um, but if you wet it and it kind of like melts away or it's just like wet dirt, <laughs> like, um, it's probably just mud. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I... I wish I could explain that a little better for like if you've literally never felt clay before, but I, I, d I don't know how else to describe that to you. Yeah, so that's how you know it's clay. Uh, again, on the other hand, if it's like really wet, so you're like grabbing it from the bottom of the river or something, for example, and it's really wet, uh, you might want to just squeeze it out a little bit. Um, and then again, if it keeps the shape of your fist, it's likely clay. Um, again, if you knead it a bit. Um, Okay, great. Where can you find clay? Um, there are some people that were like, where where are you in the country? Like, where did you find this? I'm in North Dakota right now, but that doesn't matter. I said that to somebody and they're like, oh darn, I'm in Texas. I'm like, bro, like, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Clay's everywhere. 
Like it is everywhere. Okay, great. So now that you know that, no matter where you live, okay, well, maybe if you live in the desert, you're gonna have a hard time finding clay. Okay, but pretty much no matter where you live, you are in luck. You'll probably find clay somewhere. Um, so first, my tip is Google your area plus the word clay. And then just see what happens, see what comes up. Are they gonna tell you if you're in a clay rich area, um, you can get a little more specific and be like clay deposits near me, right? And they're gonna tell you if you're in a clay rich um, environment or if you're not, right? Um, so then uh, what I did to find a little bit more specifics about clay when I was like, that looks like clay over there. Can I collect that? Um, I went and I googled, I don't even remember what I googled, but I will link the article that I found that helped me a lot. Um, specifically, it's step two, so you have to scroll a little bit, there's a lot of preamble, uh, but then step two is like locating your clay or whatever. And largely you're gonna find clay by bodies of water. So that's lakes, rivers, streams, um, not the ocean really, maybe, Google. Um, yeah, but you're gonna look in those spots right? And so in my situation, I was able to look at the sand and they were kind of like, I'll insert the clip. And those little like chunks that you see around, that is clay sitting on top of the sand. And you know, because you'll touch it and you're like, that is not sand, that is not mud, that is clay. Um, so I saw that first and then I stepped in it and I was like, no, yeah, that's clay. Um, but then I looked and the next clip in the TikTok is that it's kind of like a really small, like three inch cliff. And that cliff is clay. So if you see sort of drop offs like that by the banks of bodies of water, but if you touch it and it's clay, then it's clay. Um, you might have to dig a little bit. Bro, like I'm saying absolute nonsense right here. Okay, don't let me be your only point of reference. If this is something that genuinely interests you, research. Um, Google is your best friend, literally, anything in the world you can google oh, where you're interested in location where you're interested in how to where you're interested in diy literally anything like that and the first like five things that come up will probably be helpful and if not keep scrolling and if not change your wording so sometimes you might have to dig a little bit past the dirt that's right there because i mean dirt's everywhere um it is with my rock. so regarding that video I also want to clarify this is my first time collecting and clarifying clay so that was just my little like journey of doing that I am by no means an expert on that but having done it I can answer a few questions I can answer for example like what is clay um, so there are a few different ways that you can go about go about clarifying your clay you will want to do this because clay comes from the earth therefore it's filled with um, rocks probably some grass or plant debris, maybe some little buggies. Um, my clay that I found, maybe it just wasn't a hospitable um, environment, but there were virtually no bugs or any little critters in it. But I did have to sift slash skim out, you know, plant matter and rocks and stuff. Because that's no good in your clay. The memory of a snap pea and brain fog. And association. <laughs> so, yeah. Right. <laughs> Ooh. Um, okay. So the process that I did was a wet technique, and no, of course it was not perfect. <laughs> so somebody commented, "That clay's really bad. You need to do way more steps. You did a terrible technique." Um. But no, yeah. So don't take me as like the be all end all, by any means. Again, this is my first time doing this. <laughs> So what I did is, what I tried to do is the wet technique where you put all your clay into like a bucket, right? And fill it with water and then you're going to mix and like squish your clay until it is slip. I don't really know how to describe slip in good words, but it's basically your clay is at its smallest um, amount, like at its smallest makeup basically. So you, you've squished down the clay until it's just like the granules and that is mixing with the water. And then you leave that bucket for a bit and then the clay sort of settles to the bottom, the rocks, the debris settles down. Um, there are many ways to do this 
and I did it like the impatient lazy way. Um, so I'm just gonna tell you how I did it and if you want to find out how like people do it better, Google please. <laughs> Um, so I had a little sifter literally from the kitchen and I scooped down on the bottom, got all my rocks and grass and stuff and I like kind of like rubbed it down so that all the slip and clay would go through. Uh, and so then what we're left with in this giant slip bucket is pretty much just a slip. And then I leave that for, I left it for multiple days. Uh, other people are like, yeah, you can just wait a couple hours, whatever. Um, water will stay on the top, then there's sort of like slippy sort of stuff, and then there's more clay. And then I'm skimming off water. Like pretty much every time I walk outside, I'll just have a little jar, um, a little cup from the kitchen, and I just put it down, trying not to disturb the slip layer, and I just get all the water I can, um, just to help the evaporation thing, you know, so the sky doesn't have to do it all. Thanks, sky. That is then you can what I did in the video is you get your couple layers of t-shirt or sheets cheesecloth that sort of thing put it over a bucket pour in your mostly clay mixture if this is still slip you might have a problem it might all go down to the bottom but then uh, the sheets will collect the clay and then the water will drip through so what you saw me doing in the TikTok video again was I had a rubber spatula. Don't call my dad, I used it. Um, but the one that, you know, like if you're making a cake, it like gets like every last grain, every last drop of cake batter out of the bowl. Um, and I used that and I would scrape the uh, bottom of the fabric. Like, I did it kind of often because I was like really impatient. I was like, this is how I'm getting my thing done. Um, so I don't claim that that was correct, but my clay is fine. So, because I mean, it's, the clay is very like impermeable to a level. Like obviously it's not impermeable, but if it's at the bottom of the fabric, water's gonna have a hard time getting through it. So I was just sca scraping it away every once in a while, you know, so that water would actually have somewhere to go. Um, and then I was, sort of scraping that clay, putting in a different bucket, um, letting the sun dry that out. That worked a lot better for me than just keeping it like, you know, in these buckets and it doesn't matter, whatever. It's okay, so then another technique of clarifying your clay is using the dry technique, wherein you basically get all of your raw clay and you set it out. And this is better if you live in a very dry climate um, or you have a very hot sun. Keep that in mind. But you're gonna set out all of your clay, you know, pretty thinly, pretty like, uniformly taking up a lot of surface area. So you're not gonna like put it in a bucket, this won't work. You have to like lay it up flat. Um, and the sun will dry out all of your clay until it is like this hard, right? You're gonna break it up into really small pieces so that you can like, I guess you can sift out rocks, bramble, that kind of stuff. And then you put it into a bucket, pour water into it and you re-wet it. So it's kind of, almost kind of going the opposite sort of technique of the wet. All right, so then with your clay, another question I got a lot was, can I put this in the oven? Or like, how does this work? This is regular clay. This is how people collect clay. <laughs> so funny to me that people are like, oh, the clay you got from the river, that's like air dry, like oven bake, right? Like, no. <laughs> like, that's clay. <laughs> I mean, that's funny to me. So yeah, you need to put it in a kiln. Uh, it will not fire in your oven. Uh, this is earthenware as far as I'm aware. So that's like kind of the um, lowest heat level of uh, pottery, of ceramics. So it's like earthenware, stoneware, and then porcelain. As far as I'm aware, there might be something in between stoneware and porcelain. Um, so this is like the lowest fire and it's a thousand degrees, right? Um, for like multiple days. So unless your oven can get up to a thousand degrees and can be on for multiple days at a time, don't think you could bake this in your oven. Um, and as somebody else pointed out, they were like, yeah, I tried to put like a wall around my garden with this clay and the next time it rained, it washed away. Yes. Um, even if it is at bisquare uh, levels, which is where it is dry, like you make your clay, set it out to dry and it is this. Um, it's gray, it's hard, um, 
and this is how it'll be before it goes in the kiln for the first time even if it's at this level this is really easily breakable if I like slam it against this table it'll just crumble uh, so I won't do that <laughs> um, and if I dipped this in water it would turn back into it would turn back into this clay so I'm not gonna do that either um, this is, yeah, this is real clay. Like, you know how ancient people made pottery before now? But it's understandable. I'm not trying to like be classist or anything. Like I understand that everybody has that same access to information. I just think it's kind of funny because to me that seems very obvious, but obviously it's not for everybody. So where can you get access to a kiln? I don't have a kiln, right? Many people do not have a kiln, uh, especially people who are just like doing ceramics for fun. Uh, if you find clay in a river and you're like, I just want to do something with this. Why do I need a kiln, right? Um, if you have a local community art center, you can ask if you can use kiln, some kiln space. You may need to rent, rent some kiln space, uh, pay for it. What I'm going to do uh, is ask my local uh, college uh, or your university or whatever that has a ceramics program. My dad works at the college, so I'm going to ask them if I... There's a big caveat. I'm, I might be going back to my own school where my residency is supposed to take place and then of course I'll have access to a kiln. Um, but everything in the world is crazy right now so if that doesn't happen I'm going to ask my local college and say hey I've got some pieces um, can I please rent out some of your kiln space so that I may fire my pieces. Um, yeah so you'll have to ask for kiln space. Comments were what are you gonna make out of your clay? I don't know whatever I want. Um, so many of the things that I'm making now actually, and I don't feel like getting up again to show you more versions of this, but these are paint palettes. Um, I'm mostly going to be making a lot of these because I also make my own watercolor paint. Um, so these are palettes and once they are fired and glazed, because these, if you don't glaze it, you know, there's like micro holes in these because they, there are. Um, once you put the glaze on it, these are really sustainable, reusable um, paint palettes, paint pans. You can be painting people make using clay. A couple other things addressing from the uh, TikTok video itself. I think this one's is from ASOS a couple of years ago. My pronouns are they, them. Not she, not queen, not her, not ma'am. Okay, I think that's about it. Yeah, I really, really, really hope this video um, cleared up some of the questions that you might have had about clay, about collecting clay. Um, um, leave a comment if I didn't answer something or if I answered something in a way that is very vague or unclear. Sorry if you can hear my brother singing. Sorry if you can hear my family having a conversation. Alright, that's it. So, thanks guys.